me watching the way I treated you was fucking unacceptable, dude. I am no longer going to be editing the, the episodes until I get my mind right. Guess what? You look stupid. No, you don't. You look great. You look dumb. When I was in a relationship, I didn't hang out with friends. No, I you didn't. But I will do crack. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Tip and Flip Show. I'm Tiffany Jenkins. Meatloaf. That, was, that wasn't your line? That wasn't? No, we rehearsed. So, And I'm Flip Adam. On this podcast, we discuss everything addiction, marriage, parenting, even meatloaf. Whatever pops in our head. Yes. Meat, what is with you and meatloaf today? I'm really hungry. We're also going to talk about um, addiction, but not in the way that you're thinking. It's uh, something that you might be addicted to also. 1,000%. It has to do with me also that second topic is also about me but it could be about you also wait are you telling people they're addicted to you yeah there it is and the only help is by coming and cleaning my house and g giving me back massages well i was gonna say they can't clean your house because it's already cleaned <laughs> <laughs> ew don't zoom in on my face maria maria your leg is closer you remind me of a West Side Story. Anyway, we're not professionals at anything at all. So if you happen to hear us giving advice, it's based on our own personal perspective. Uh, so take it with a grain of salt. We've both had very interesting lives. We've been to hell and back. And um, we love sharing that experience. And I'm allergic to cats. On today's episode, we're going to reflect on last week's episode and the feedback we received. It was a tough one. Almost uh, ended our friendship and the world. Yeah, it destroyed my life. We're also going to be discussing parenting guilt. We're going to answer some questions, possibly listen to a voicemail. Maybe. And if you guys want to, we love uh, your feedback, comments. Please give us a call, 941-301-8651. Text, call, whatever you want. Yes, uh, one day we're going to memorize that phone number, but we do. If you have any questions about anything that you don't want actual advice on, leave us a voicemail. We might play it on a future episode. That's exciting. You can watch these episodes on YouTube weekly. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is our producer. I'll find a way. Felonius Clyde Frog. Okay, you can watch this episode on YouTube if you'd like to see the weirdness live in action. Um, or you can listen to it anywhere you stream your podcasts. But we're so grateful for you. If you dig what you hear, leave us a review because it makes us look cool. 30 minutes in, we just got past the intro, ladies and gents. I think we did really good. For I do too. Time. You ready for this? Because I'm not. Hey, Tiff and Flip. My name is Michelle, and I love your show, and I watch, I follow The Home Group and Tiffany Jenkins, and I love this podcast. I have over four and a half years, so I'm clean and sober. Um, and I have a boundaries question. So, um, I've set this boundary multiple times with my mom. She is a uh, marijuana smoker and, um, she, I've set boundaries of her picking up the stuff and moving it. So it's not in my son's reach. He's seven now. And it started when he was about two. And the first time I found it, where it was accessible in a drawer that he could just open and look at. I don't want to have my son totally away from my mom. Um, but a lot of people have said to, um, not allow him over there by himself. So I'm kind of torn. Like, what would you do if your parent was an addict and kept finding the stuff and triggering myself? So I was just wondering what your guys' um, experience, strength, and hope would be regarding um, something like this. And if you have anybody that's experienced it. And I greatly appreciate you guys. And see you on the next one. Girl. Who was at the door? Girl, the real problem here is the pe you want to talk about boundaries. Whoever rings your doorbell like that, smack them right in Adam's apple. Oh, I could what? Okay, you want to touch on that uh, on that voicemail? Um, yeah, I just want to make sure I understood. Her mom puffs the magic dragon and leaves it laying around for her toddler. I don't think that she just leaves it laying around, but I think that if it's in drawers and you know toddlers go exploring and open up drawers and stuff like that. <laughs> right. Pull it over this way. Well, I'm trying to not pick you up as you do well. Your, do, your, do whatever makes you happy. I'm just going to stop being oh, a, be a crazy you're person. You're not being a crazy person. Thank you. You're welcome. You don't have to do that, but I like that you did. 
Uh, I didn't even realize I was doing it until you said thank you. So that should tell you something. Okay. I, I would set the boundary and if it was me. Yeah. I set that boundary one time. If I am not, because it's not like you're asking for the world. Like, just put it up while my son's there. And if you can't do that, that's fine. But I'm not going to drop my kid off anymore. Right. And there's no, I mean, that's what's most important because there's going to be nothing worse than your kid being in the hospital because he got into some shit and you being like, man, I wish I wouldn't have been so afraid of upsetting my mom. And then guess who gets the DCF case? Ooh. Oh, we'll probably shouldn't say that, but. I don't know. Guess it's, who gets. Uh, I mean, you're not wrong though. Like yeah. I, I imagine that would be investigated. Oh, wholeheartedly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, so I think uh, just I think maybe being firm and being like, I love you, mom. I support you, whatever you want to do. But for me and my life, this is what I require in order to feel safe with my kid around you. And if it's not something you can do, that's okay too. I'll just have to find other means for uh, a, a sitter. Yep. So yeah, and congratulations on being in recovery. That's amazing. I know nothing about boundaries, so don't ask me because... I, uh, that is something that I would like to work on for sure. Um, eventually, but I don't know. My parents aren't here. Uh, and I can't imagine having to have a conversation like that with my mom. It'd be so weird. I'd have that conversation in a heartbeat. Would you? Yeah. No, because I mean, here's the thing. My kids are the most important thing to me in this world and I'm mm -hmm. not going to jeopardize their health and safety for anyone, whether you're my parent, my grandparent, my brother, my, for anything. Right. You know, I mean, that's just the the reality of it. Okay, so yeah, so good luck with setting that boundary with your mother. I think it's absolutely the right thing to do. Mm. Um, and keep us posted on how it goes because I'm invested now. I know. Boundaries are crucial. Boundaries are so important in recovery. Um, I wanted to just quickly, not the whole episode, just briefly address um, the episode that we aired last week. It was a reaction to a previous video. Which I loved. Not the previous video, the reaction. Yeah. I, I thought I did too. Um, Not so much? <laughs> um, well, it's crazy because when we were filming the reaction, I'm just going to be honest, okay? And I'm already on people's shit list from that episode. So I don't think so. But I just, I, even in the reaction video, I still thought I was right. And that's okay. While we were reacting, I was still trying to get him to see that he was wrong and I was right. Not that it matters who's right and wrong, but I still was seeking validation that I wasn't nuts. And I was, I don't think I did a great job of saying something very specific. And that is, I never realized how defensive I get mm. about things, especially when it comes to somebody downplaying my health fears. And it's not his fault. It's from a previous relationship. And during the previous relationship, um, I would never get validation. And so I constantly felt stupid. And so when that exact conversation was happening, not exact, but when I was trying to express fear, which valid or irrational or not, it was no fault of theirs, but it brought me right back to that time. And I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't even know it was an issue that I had. I didn't even know that that was. So when Sierra kept saying you're triggered, I took triggered as having a negative connotation. I thought of it negatively. Really? The word triggered, I took offense to it. Hmm. And I don't know why, but when she said you were triggered, it, it made me cringe and I don't know why. And when people called me defensive, it pissed me off and I don't know why it affects me that way. Um, I was clearly defensive. I was defending something that nobody was even refuting. Like you'd be like, okay, I get it. And I'd be like, but you said I'm a stupid <laughs> whore liar. Like I just kept fighting with no one. And so my point is I wanted to state that since, since the reaction video came out, um, I had to take a step back from the internet. And How's that going? It's going great. It's going to kind of segue into the second topic, but I, um, I thought that people were going to be like, no, Tiffany, you were right. They were mean bully heads. 
and they were being jerks. Like, obviously, I didn't want people to say that. Yeah, but that's what you were expecting. But I was expecting the comments to validate my shit. And and they weren't. And that's when I had an identity crisis. I'm like, wait. Still, to this day, this isn't going how I thought. I'm still not seeing this. Even though we had that understanding, I still wasn't clear on it. And so I was like, I'm going to go back to the Patreon Live and watch the video because I know that I'm not that big of a bitch. And I had to turn it off uh, about 20 minutes in. I had to turn it off. And I, I privated it because I was so fucking embarrassed. Mm. I was really embarrassed. Um, and anyway, I don't know why being called defensive is offensive. I don't know why being called triggered is offensive. That is something that I need to work on. Um, and I do, I apologize. I really, I do. I don't think I looked at you and said, I'm sorry. I think you did. I didn't. And if I did, I cut it. I never said I was sorry to you and Sierra. And it was her first time on the podcast. I didn't know how nervous she was about it. Mm. I had no fucking clue. And then I went to the bathroom and you guys were in the camera and you turned to her and you said, this is really big for her. Um, you turned to the Patreons and you said, this is really big for her. This is big. She was really scared to come on here. And she was like, yeah, it's definitely out of my comfort zone. And I came back in and I'm like, fuck you guys, sit down and <laughs> shut your fucking mouths, you idiot. Like I, I had no clue. And I, part of me feels like if I knew that that's how she felt, I would have been so much more gentle. I would have been so much more comforting. I thought because we were doing the whole two girls, one menstruation thing, we were just playing up the we're bitches and you're in trouble. Yeah. But I was so off base and I really am so sorry to you. And I've apologized to her personally, but also to Sierra for the way that I behaved and the way that I reacted to things. Somebody complimented Sierra in the compliments and I gave the nastiest look. For what? Like, I can't even explain it. She's my favorite fucking human on the planet. And I don't know why I reacted like that. But I looked like a really shitty friend. And she kept saying, it's okay. I know you. There was nothing. You've never made me feel that way ever, even on that night. And I'm like, it doesn't matter to me that you know my heart and you know how I am. Me watching the way I treated you was fucking unacceptable, dude. It really was. Mm. Both of you. And I just, I wanted to apologize. I know you probably don't want me to and whatever, but I feel like I have to because I only realized after the reaction video came out and after everybody gave their own input, I actually realized my part in it. And it wasn't until then. And so I am really sorry. And I've been looking inward and trying to learn why I respond the way I respond to certain things. And I'm, I'm looking forward to working on that. And I'm not as perfect as I thought I was. And I'm not as amazing as I thought I was. And I always thought I was right and everybody else was wrong. And, and it was just very humbling. And it reminded me of early recovery when people would tell me shit about my character defects and I would get fucking defensive. Ugh. That hasn't happened in a really long time. I'm surrounded by people who are like, you're amazing. You changed my life. You're so funny. I look forward to you every day, you know? So over time, subconsciously, I think to myself, I am can write about everything. I'm amazing. You know what I mean? Even though if you know me, you know, I don't walk around with that attitude, but to have somebody tell me something other than that was jarring and necessary. And I'm really looking forward to working on this part of myself and exploring that. Well, I appreciate that you didn't have to do that. I'm glad the episode played out the way that it did. Not because of the stress and anxiety and hurt and confusion that it caused, but I am, I truly, if we could go back, I wouldn't change it because the outpouring of comments on wow, thank you so much for, you know, kind of breaking this down. There was even a, there was a lady that texted and wanted to thank us. It was so cool. She said it was so cool to see you guys 
break down the conversation and see where the miscommunication was. And I watched it with my husband. And as a matter of fact, after watching it, I was able to have a conversation with him Mm -hmm. about how I was feeling. And we just had this really healthy, open dialogue that we hadn't had in years. Mm -hmm. So for reasons like that, I wouldn't change the episode for anything. Mm -hmm. I also understand that you were painted in a not great light, right? But I also think that it's important, and I hope that you know that having an off day is completely different than like being a terrible person, Hmm. which you are not because I promise this wouldn't be happening if you were a terrible, you know, if you're, if you were running this thing like Ellen DeGeneres, like we're not even having a conversation, you know what I mean? And I think that it's important for people to understand that some days people just have off days and it was the perfect storm because I had an off day myself. You know what I mean? A lot of times, like if I'm having an off day, you can pick up the slack or vice versa and we can kind of snap each other out of it. But we were both just, you know, button heads and not really understanding why we were butting heads. And so I loved the outcome of the episode, the conclusion. And I think it was necessary because that's life. And even if there is just one person that saw that and got the courage to tell somebody close to them, hey, listen, I'm feeling some type of way about this, then it was totally worth it. 100%. And that's why I wanted to air it, knowing that it was going to make me look like a D-bag. Like I knew. I didn't know the extent, but I knew that it was not going to be painting me in a good light. I knew it was going to show people a side of me that they'd never seen, but I also knew that it was something new and something different because you never like on television or anywhere really, you never get to see the fallout and then the process of coming to an understanding. It's very rare. And so when I know you wanted to cut it because you thought you look like a butthole, I wanted to cut it because I thought I, or I didn't want to cut it because I knew in my heart that somehow it was going to help people. And I'm so glad it did. And that's the only reason I honestly, That's the only reason I think that I haven't slunk into a hole of depression because when I put something out on the internet and it does not go the way I I think it will or people have negative things to say about me, it sends me into a real life depression where I'm contemplating everything. The whole, all of this to say, going forward, I am no longer going to be editing the the episodes until I get my mind right. Um, Can I say why? not kind of yeah no absolutely i think it's important okay i have been on social media since 2017 or 2018 and i i know what the internet is and so bringing my sweet innocent friends into that hell fire was really scary for me and so when editing these episodes um i have obsessed i'd say about how they're portrayed, how he's portrayed. And on the other episode, how Sierra's portrayed. It feels to me like I'm bringing my friends, we're heading into war, and I have already taken so many bullets that I, I have to jump in front of them and take them because I already know the pain that comes with it. And that's what I was doing. Um, not that it took a lot of editing to make you look great, but I was using my own discretion. And I was trying to predict what people would think. And so I would, if there was something that sounded, you know, rude or condescending or whatever, I would cut it because I don't want people judging you. I would rather be the villain. Um, This last episode, there's no amount of editing that could have changed the way I behaved. And there's nothing that I could have included that would have changed the way you, you behaved. But I was so focused on you guys looking good that I didn't give a shit how I looked because I've already gotten it all before. And in turn, it really fucked up my mental health. And so we're going to have just a more natural approach. We're not going to cut out things to make people look better and make others, you know, whatever. And that's the thing. I wasn't 
trying to make you guys look good and me look bad. I just cut out anything I thought people could interpret from you guys. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to do a more natural approach. And I think that it might not be as riveting and exciting and quick, but I also think it will, you'll just be able to see it play out in real time. And don't be surprised if there's meatloaf pictures because I'm editing and I like meatloaf. I feel uh, like I would be surprised though if there was. Well, stay meat. tuned. Watch the edited version. Okay. We'll find out together. We, this is exciting. A little. You look really excited about mm -hmm. the meatloaf pictures. I, I like it. Meatloaf. Maybe. Hear me out. Okay. Deep conversation. Deep conversation. Picture meatloaf while meatloaf is playing in the background. Copy, you know what I mean? Copyright. But yeah, other than that. Oh, I mean, I'll call him and get him to sign off on it. Oh, perfect. You know? Yeah. He watches the pod. Yeah, he does. He's going to be on an episode. So <laughs> lots of meatloaf. That's what you have to look forward to. Less editing, more meatloaf. That's not, you're not selling it. That, so, that's good. So, so good. Somebody out there likes meatloaf. All right. What are we getting into? So this brings me to the second topic, which I thought was very important because to keep myself from spiraling into a depression and reading all the comments about myself and internalizing them and never leaving the house again, I took social media off my phone. It got to a point where I called Flip and I was like, "Can I'm just going to be honest and this is, we might cut this. Okay. Well, or we might not. Will you, re uh, you should read the text that I sent you the day. Read that text interaction between you and I. What day was that? I'm not going to read that. I don't care. That's. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Let me read it. You sure? Yeah. It. Okay. The words of Tiffany Jenkins narrated by Flippard. These people are being fucking assholes. And I'm about to cuss that girl out. Can unfollow, bitch. Nobody's forcing you to be here. And then period question mark. You, I didn't know what to say. I said, who, what happened? For yeah, sure. I know. That was fine. <laughs> Maybe it's better that they can't hear what I said. Okay, keep going. The girl in our inbox. I know what our next episode can be about. Some revelations and realizations that I've had. I kind of want to talk to you about them ahead of time. But I also kind of want to record the conversation. I think I'm going to not be on social media apart from the podcast stuff for a little bit. I don't think that's, you're doing an ice cube impersonation and that's not how I. I have been working on my ice cube impersonation for 13 years and I have never been able to get it. And are you telling me I just nailed it? Are you serious? No, of course not. Oh. But that would be cool though. I was so happy for you. I know. That was good. Okay. So. Well, this is how I read keep it. reading. Keep reading? Okay. Yeah. What did you... Oh, yeah. Then you just ignored my pleas for help and sent me a shirt. That somebody made that said, you can't water your flowers. And if you were on the live, you know. <laughs> that was great. And th did we talk about it anymore after that? No. Okay. So I was pissed because this lady came up... If you're here, sorry, not sorry. Came up in our inbox and said, she needs to quit Red Bull and vaping or else I'm going to unfollow. I can't sit back and watch her kill herself. I did. I, I did quit after that episode, bitch. First of all. Second of all. Bye. If it was just that one message, fine. She sent 13 back to back telling me all about myself. Can I ask a question? Are we, are we venting? No, no, no. We're not venting. Do you want to? No, I, I'm asking. I'm asking, are we venting? No, I just wanted to explain. Okay. But if you want to vent. No, I was asking. <gasps> oh, yes. Were, were you going to give me a solution? Um, I wasn't. I was just going to give you a different perspective. But if we're venting, we're venting. And I'm cool either way. I'm interested in the different perspective. Thank you for giving me the choice. Absolutely. I can understand why that would be frustrating because like it's your life if you want to drink red bulls um and smoke e-cigs and do all that that is your prerogative you are a grown ass woman and you can do whatever you want to do however people have formed 
a bond with you, right? And even though they have funny ways of showing it, and even though that sounds a little weird because it's like through a screen or whatever, you have inspired people and you have like shown people that it's okay to not be okay and you have been a voice for mental health and like just all of this stuff. You've done incredible work, right? And people, it resonates with people. Mm -hmm. And thank you. so people like, care about you and your well-being and so people see kind of weird health things and they don't know this is where they make the mistake they don't know kind of your medical history they don't know your background they don't know a lot to jump to conclusions however i feel like that's like the scapegoat right is like oh energy drinks and nicotine have to be it. Which fun fact, did you know that nicotine in the pure form is actually super beneficial? It goes to the, I forget, certain part of the brain and actually promotes. Allegedly. I'm a doctor. You're not. And you I'm a doctor. can't make it sound awesome because it sounds awesome. Well, it, but it's nicotine and it's pure form, which nobody really truly gets unless, unless you, you know somebody. You know what I'm saying? So um, I think it's coming from a place of like almost let's look at it like a addiction, right? When like people have to like draw that hard line in the sand where they're like, like my mom had to say that. Like, listen, I'm tired of watching you kill yourself. I And I understand that. And it did look dumb with me being like, I don't know why my heart's so messed up. And I chugged a Red Bull on camera to be funny and then got really pissed that nobody was taking my heart palpitations seriously. Like, fucking idiot. Like, I I'm an idiot. I get it. I totally get it. I just don't think it needed to be in all caps. And I don't think she needed to cuss. Okay. No, and, if, and, that's, and if, that's fair. If we read her whole thread... Yeah, no, she she reiterated it a couple times. She reiterated it a couple times and uh, completely understand uh, and she didn't your frustration. Know I, she didn't know I quit, so mm -hmm. it's fine. Anyway, my point is, that was the straw that broke the camel's back, and I texted him and said, I can't do it, dude, because I was. I was obsessing. I was looking in the any inbox that we had for somebody to be like, Tiffany, you were totally normal, and everything in that podcast looked fine to me, Like, and it never came. Instead, it was... Tiffany, oh, that was another thing she said. Um, you bullied your friend just because you're on your period doesn't give you an excuse to be an asshole. You're lucky to have friends like that. And so then I got offended because I'm like, are you saying that I don't deserve them? Like, I, you know how I do it. Yeah. I just put words in other. And so I texted you and I was like, I have to step back because I am, it's fucking me up. And mm. so... I took social media off my phone. I took Facebook and Instagram mainly because TikTok isn't an issue for me and I do love the occasional scroll. TikTok is an issue for me, but not as bad. Anyway, I took it off initially for mental, but also because I had been neglecting this, mm. my home, and obsessing about the podcast. And I could not stop myself from scrolling and there are times where I will be like what am I even doing I have to get up and get ready but I can't stop and I know it sounds ridiculous but it's a problem for me and so I have accomplished more since taking the social media off my phone than I have in frigging months and it's because I didn't feel that pull. Hey, you have to make a reel to stay relevant. Hey, you have to make a funny video. Everybody's expecting you to be juggling the Jenkins. If my brain had a morning meeting and you haven't done anything like that in a long time, so why don't you go look for some inspiration and make a video? Like, like it's always in the back of my head pulling me towards my phone. So when I just cut that off and was like, you focus on your home, my whole mother effing life changed, dude. I'm super uh, impressed and proud. No, proud's not the right word. No, proud that you took a negative situation because in the past, I have seen where like if you, you kind of go into shutdown mode mm -hmm. and you sleep, 
Mm. That's what you do. You sleep for days. Yep. And so literally over the past two or three days, every time I called you, what are you doing, cleaning? <laughs> Purging. Purging is what you said. And so I think that it's super cool that you took a, a negative kind of situation and focused that energy into creating positive. Thank you. And look how everything, I didn't even know this room looked like this. I didn't even know it was this big. Do you know what your wife said to me? What? She said, I'm so proud of you. And I was like, thanks. She's like, no, I'm fucking serious, dude. You're breaking a habit. Do you know how big that is? That's huge. And I didn't understand. And she said, what you usually do is shut down, hide under the covers, and ignore everything. But instead, you jumped into action. Damn. And you got a different result. And that's called breaking a habit. Do you know how fucking hard it is to break a habit? I'm so proud of you. Damn. And you guys have just, can I just say that Flip and Sierra have been hyping me up every step of the way. I'll send them pictures. I cleaned out that closet. I don't know if you remember, but I had a disaster closet. Um, it was a nightmare storage. I cleaned it out. And now I use it to hold the podcast equipment. And I know exactly where everything is. And it's ah, it's life-changing. It really is. And I'm so excited. Um, I don't know how long I'm going to keep it off my phone. Probably not long. It's not like a big dramatic thing. Just until I feel like I've accomplished what I want to accomplish. But um, the point is... I want to talk about phone addiction because I think, especially in this era of influencers and content creators who it's their job to be on their phone, um, I actually printed something out. Hold on. Uh, so I printed this stuff out. Not, I don't want to re read it word for word because most of it we already know. But there was some interesting things that it is um, just to think about. Um, I'm going to try to make it exciting so it's not boring or luxury. But if it starts to feel like that, then you know me. I'm going to stop immediately and change the subject. So uh, the word addiction is often used to describe any impulsive behavior that's excessive, causes significant distress, and impacts a person's daily life. It can refer to substance use or specific behaviors like gambling. Although cell phone overuse isn't officially recognized as an addiction yet, it can affect a person's life cause distress, relationship issues, and feelings of shame. Let me not talk shit right now. <clears throat> I just, I really feel the relationship issues one. Oh, wholeheartedly, especially with social media and stuff like that. And there are so many people that seek validation from any source. I mean, I used to struggle with that big time. Like I would seek validation and if you were a female and you like my picture, we go together. Yeah, I remember you saying that. And so, like, that's just, and it was a problem for me. And I took a seven-year hiatus. I know, you didn't. From social media. You didn't get social media until I demanded it. For the home group podcast. Yeah. And we haven't even been going a year now. Yep. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's amazing that you were able to do that. I know, I'm going to speak hypothetically. If you are in a relationship with somebody and you're in the same room and they are just staring at their phone and missing moments mm. it is the most unattractive fucking thing sorry we gotta bleep that but if it happens every now and then fine but if you miss everything and your body is in the room but your mind is not it really affects the people around you and it makes them feel unloved and unimportant. Mm. And um, I can easily see how somebody being on their phone every second of the day, even if it isn't social media, even if it's sports scores, hey, hey, crypto, hey. Bitcoin, friggin' whatever else some guys do. I feel like that was directly shots at me. It wasn't. Um that's almost worse to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's not even anything important or relevant anyway. But social media is? Yeah. Okay. No, no, it's not. Social media. I think I might be pissed actually also if my person was on social media too. I think the whole purpose is it was a way to escape real life. And it was so obvious that that's what it was. Because even though my phone is my job, if my kids are talking to me, I'll put it down. If it's, if I've been neglecting them, I'll put it down. If anybody talks to me, I don't even bring it into restaurants. Um, 
because I know how I feel when I'm trying to have a heart to heart with somebody and they're staring at their mother phone. It's the worst. Um, but it's the world that we live in, dude. It is. It is. And it is incredibly frustrating. Here's just a different kind of thing. Next time you see somebody scrolling, I want you to look at them and you can't name one attractive person that has an attractive scrolling face. Nobody. Nobody. They always got... They're like this. You know what I mean? They got... <laughs> scroll face. You know what I mean? Nobody has an attractive scroll face. Nobody. Nobody. You heard it here first. Okay, I'm going to investigate that. So for those of you that are like, oh yeah, well screw what these people are saying because I'm going to scroll. Well, guess what? You look stupid. No, you don't. You look great. You look dumb. The whole thing, <laughs> the whole thing is... Because it's so socially acceptable, it gets to a point where you're reaching for the shit without even knowing what you're reaching for. It's like an extension of your body. And it's if you think about how long you're staring at this tiny box as opposed to the world around you, it's kind of depressing. Like I waste so much of my life looking at other people's shit mm. and I'm missing the real stuff around me. Anytime I had a spare moment, lay on the couch and scroll. And I, go ahead. I was just going to say, and now that that's not an option, I'm like, oh my gosh, I could do this. I could move this around. I could make, I made my kids effing dinner. This, you're probably like, why is that such a big deal? I'll tell you because I have really struggled with fine, with prioritizing making a meal from scratch as opposed to ordering an expensive ass Uber Eats or microwaving some kids' cuisines some mac and cheese, you know what I mean? Like, not that there's anything wrong with that, but my kids need some mother effing nutrition. And so when I don't have something pulling me away, I'm able to dedicate, and it felt so good. I put tinfoil on a baking sheet with spray. Excuse me, Martha Stewart called. She wants her tricks back. I don't even know who I am. And, uh, and I'm just, I feel really happy. So these are the signs that it's an actual problem, but this feels pointless because nothing's going to change because this is how the world is. All of our information is lightning speed at the tip of our fingers. And every day they come up with new technology to make it easier to access the information. They're getting contacts that with Google in them, freaking glasses with Google in them. Eventually it's going to be to the point where we're all just wearing VR headsets and not, you know what I mean? Like living in a fake world. Mm. So it feels pointless to even discuss this. No, but I think it's I think it's important because it's the obvious that nobody wants to discuss, right? So when you take the phone addiction, and I'm just going to focus on social media for another second, and then I'm going to get into the phone itself. But you have social media, right? And so this is what trips me out is like people, and I can say it because I did it too, were looking and constantly comparing mm. our lives to everybody else's, mm -hmm. right? Oh my God, look. Jenny's got her kids at the park. Oh, look. Bobby's at a fucking concert, mm -hmm. right? Like all this stuff, when if you were to just put the phone down, you could go experience some stuff too. 100%. Right? I promise that 10 years from now, you're not going to remember what was on your Facebook news feed, but you'll remember the first time you took the kids to Orlando by yourself, right? And so... It's crazy. It's not going to change because, don't get me wrong, I love the fact that if you're like, hey, will you meet me here? Yeah, give me the address. And I boop, 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 and I have the map instantly. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that. I like that when I don't know something, I can Google it. Like, mm -hmm. it's super cool. However, there is scientific proof I spoke to my science friends, okay, because I'm a doctor of yeah, science yeah. and words and numbers. Mm -hmm. And um, do you know who Andrew Huberman is? Yeah. Love Andrew Huberman. I have no clue. Oh, I got really excited. I'm sorry. So he is a neuroscientist, <laughs> neuroscientist, and um, they did a study. Okay. People, and this is going to be a doo-wop. Especially for you. What's a doo up? Uh, like a doozy? Yep, like a like a wow woo wee woo. Okay, none of this is <laughs> helping okay. me understand. Okay. All right. People that get screen time 
between the hours of 11 p.m. and 4 a.m. This experiment that was done in the study saw that it activates the a specific circuit in the brain called the habenula. 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 Never heard of it. You know why? Because it's because when that activates, do you know what it does? Depression. Really? It activates depression. Only between those hours? Well, it's it's about it has to do not necessarily with like social media, but with the light from the phone. What if you have night light? Upset? It's still you're still getting the hemoglobin activated? Sure. That didn't sound right. But right. so it's actually being counterintuitive because a lot of times you pick up your phone because you're bored, right? And because you want entertainment, but it's causing depression. Then you look at everything that you do on your phone that releases dopamine. Every like you get on a post, every time you comment something funny, like all of that stuff is releasing dopamine constantly. It is a constant dopamine release. And the analogy that he used was brilliant. He was like, yes, if it releases dopamine once, that's not a big deal. But it's like just spending five bucks, right? Five bucks is five bucks. But if you're constantly spending five dollars, then eventually you're broke. Mm. Do you run out of dopamine? You can. Yeah. Like, does it regenerate? Or once you're out, you're out. No, I'm, pre I'm pretty right sure out. it still produces. Your body still produces it. But if you're constantly expelling it, mm. then, you know, it Good can't for you. Out. Yeah, but you're getting... I never expel it. You're getting such little hits of it that you don't even notice. It's so oh, bizarre. That makes sense. I used to get that way when somebody who never gave me the time of day would text me randomly the most dry ass message. And I would pull out my laptop and put my headphones on and CIA read into it encryption like what's up is actually hey babe I know that we're perfect for each other and we should be together and I would like to run away so that's the last time I had dopamine but um I gave myself dopamine right now with what I'm doing yeah and but it's positive is there a difference between positive and negative dopamine? I mean, I would think. Ask your scientist friends and let I mean, us know. I mean, I will. We're having tea. All right. Tomorrow. That's. And cookies. Romantic. Tea and cookies. I would like to come to the tea party. Well, I mean, it's only for scientists and doctors, so. Uh, okay. Um, this is the signs that you have a problem with your phone. <laughs> Do we even need to read it? Is You're it alive. Yeah. Literally. Do you know how many times I've thought about buying a flip phone? God, that would be so cool. Do you know one time I had to buy an extra phone because your wife? Talk to her about this, and if she wants me to cut it, I will. Okay. Um, not just your wife, but all my friends. Like, I'm so bad still to this day about returning text messages. Yeah, you are. That's going in the compilation. Yeah. Of your dumb face. I, uh, when juggling the Jenkins was first popping off, it was so overwhelming. My phone was constantly ding, 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 ding. And all my friends were like, you're too cool for us now. You're ignoring us, blah, 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 blah. Valid. Um, but I had to get a second phone. I didn't have to. I chose to in order to keep the friendship alive. <laughs> get a separate phone for my close personal friends to message so that if I was ignoring the notifications from this one, if this one went off, then they would know, then I would know it was somebody important. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, and I think I used it for 48 hours. And then I was like, this is too much. Two phones. Yeah. Yeah, it was. But I don't know when I'm a different, I'm different than I was when I was in a relationship. When I was in a relationship, I didn't hang out with friends. No, I you didn't. I didn't go anywhere. I didn't talk to anybody. I was very much like, homebody i'm i'm a wife and a mom and this is my life now but now it's like i value friendship so much because i see that they're the only things keeping me alive mm. um i mean I, that's not as dark as it sounds but yeah well i mean food and water too yeah exactly you know? i just mean i know the importance so anyway um a reoccurring inability to resist the impulse to use your phone mm. anxiety or ir 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 
Irritability after a period without using your phone. Do you feel that way? Irritability after a period? No, that's what you said. That's why I was... And then you asked me a question and I said, wait a minute. Too soon, Flip. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, I don't feel that. The, you know, the interesting thing is that people use phones and they use phones in a very extroverted type of way, right? They're on social media, they're commenting, they're liking, they're posting stuff, like they're kind of putting themselves out there. But in turn, I feel like as a society, we be, have become more introverted uh, because of it. Uh, because of it. Dude, uh, I have this thought, excuse me, all the fucking time. Excuse my mouth. I'm not joking. I feel because we can get groceries delivered now. Mm. Because we can get anything under the sun delivered now. Because we have cell phones. We don't know how to fucking talk to people anymore. It gives us social anxiety to think of interacting with a human in real time. That's not everybody. Me. But since I don't have drugs or alcohol to like make it fun or give me the courage, like regular conversations are so hard because I'm used to having time to process Responding when it's convenient, when I'm giving it a thought, da 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 da. I think about that all the time. Eventually, we're all, and I'm not making fun of it at all. I'm being so serious. We're all going to have agoraphobia. We're all going to be terrified to leave the house and talk to people. It's already happening. I'm not saying everybody hasn't always had anxiety and social anxiety. I'm just, once they provided us the ability to connect with people anywhere in the world, instantly without having to be face to face on our own time it changed everything there were days i used to thrive for human interaction i used to kill to leave my house it would drive me nuts to have to sit home and wait by the house phone for one of my friends to call i couldn't take it damn shout out house phones shout out house phones but yeah i agree i absolutely agree we we are all so not we all let me know i am so nervous to be around people it's just, it's so weird. You've seen Wally. It's my favorite movie of all time. Mm-hmm. You've seen Wally? Wally. No, yeah, no. Evie. Okay. So many questions, but what's the correlation, first of all? Wally. Right. Uh, That's my favorite movie of all time. Why? In the history of cinema. Why? <laughs> Why? Because it's true. It's about a robot. On Mars or something, right? It's about a robot on planet Earth that cleans up trash because Earth was abandoned because they got this cool spaceship and everybody's in these chairs with these screens right here and they're all just like no. super... shut up. Shut up. Shut your mouth. Okay, I it, did. Is that the fucking movie where you're sitting and you have your drink and there's a screen and you ride around and yes. just... That- my favorite movie of all time when i tell you that in the future we're all going to be wearing headsets and that's the exact moment i'm referring to yeah wally i I didn't know it was wally yeah i uh as a matter of fact until i was 24 had a wally blanket okay it was like a comforter so i mean like i was still cool it wasn't like a blankie yeah that would be so weird shout out wally that's so crazy but it's it's the truth that's what is happening there i went grocery shopping yesterday and i'm walking around the store and i just i'm literally passing people as they're grocery shopping and people are just like pushing their cart and they're just like this mm-hmm. you know i um, went to a, sorry i'm no, so excited that's uh, Go. okay no it's just it's bizarre it's bizarre and i think that i am a little more aware because i was off social media so much and really the only thing i do on my phone aside from obviously the podcast social media stuff is play games you weren't gonna say porn that's what i said i'm not gonna watch porn in the dentist waiting room yeah who does that um so I think that I'm a little more kind of aware of it. And don't get me wrong, I'm not perfect. I still fall short. Like I still 
I'll yeah, watch. you do. I don't like that. <laughs> That's what you do to me every fucking I don't like it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> it felt so good, though. It did, didn't it? <laughs> it did. Yes. I still a little, still a little victory. It felt so good. Um, <sighs> but there is something. There's, there's something to it, and the reality is, it's not going to change. Yeah, it's not the the rate of speed that technology is kind of taking off. It is only going to get worse. Yeah, and so that's why. And you're not gonna like it. Oh, great. you're not gonna like it. I don't like much. Because it has to do with NFTs. Ugh. What? Okay. You know what? I support you and you're... Go for it. <clears throat> the only social media that I did have for probably the past year, year and a half, was I had a Twitter, but it was only for, like, NFT people that I would, like, follow and stuff like that, like projects and stuff like that. And one of their biggest things and it was not one person it was everybody is they would have a saying go touch grass you say that all the time and that's where i got it from and they talk and these are people that live behind their computer right and you know they would uh people would post pictures of like you know climbing a mountain or like at the beach or just like sitting in the grass and like it was so refreshing to see nft people do that yeah Oh, that's they, cool. Like cheering each other on. Yeah, to to unplug for yeah. a, a bit, reset. Because I think it's important to kind of go out there. Listen, I don't care how cool a video is or a post is or a picture. There is nothing like getting out in nature and seeing something that is just you can't explain. Yeah, in the moment for sure. It is amazing. But getting there, you know what I mean? Like, I have to remind myself, like, you're going to love it when you get there. But to me, I'm just such a creature of habit and comfort that if you were like, if you were like, let's go for a hike, I'd go probably because I knew it wouldn't be weird or awkward mm -hmm. and you wouldn't put me in any situations. But like to go myself, it would be so hard. But I always end up loving it after I'm done. What I was going to say before, really quick, even though we're past it, I went back you, I went back to my high school to speak to the kids about drugs. Damn. That's dope. That is so freaking cool. <laughs> oh, my God. That is like a bucket list thing for sure. Really? Yeah. Oh, do it. Yeah. Call the principal. Well. I'll call the principal. Okay. Continue. Okay. Um, anyway, I felt like I was in the frigging twilight zone. Because I, you just looked at my eye for longer than two seconds. Is something wrong? Normally, when you're having a conversation with somebody, you're supposed to look in their eyes. And I don't like it. Oh, okay. I'm just kidding. I don't mind. I just, eat, but it was like a studying. Like, I'm going to wait for her to finish talking and then tell her that her eyelashes are dangling in the wind kind of look. That's me just being insecure and needing you to validate me and confirm that I look fine. I mean, them eyelashes I need to work are on, on point. Don't do it. Don't feed into my shit, Flip. Don't do it. Don't yeah. enable me in this behavior. Okay. Well, I, mean, I have to work on it. Fair enough. Anyway, somebody, believe it or not, wanted me to go talk to kids <laughs> um, about life. I felt like I was in the twilight zone. I was walking through the same hallways me and all my friends used to talk to. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I have questions. You used to talk, no. you and your friends used to talk to hallways? No, we didn't. We used to talk in hallways. Okay, that makes a little more sense. And nearly every single kid was staring at their phone, not looking where they're going, not not talking to each other, just in their own world. And it broke my heart. Like it really rattled me because I'm like, dude, when I was a teen, like in high school, I, I would live to see my friends in the hall. We'd high five. I'd pass some notes. The cute boy, we'd like eye bang. And well, it was me. And then he would hide and run away. But it's so different now. The We had, because you're my age, we had, I remember in high school, the Nokia phones. <laughs> yeah. Or the chirp chirps. Yep. Um, 
but my Nokia phone had the light up battery pack mm-hmm. and the light up antenna. And I, I still remember my first ringtone. Yeah, what was it? Bubba Sparks Ugly. It was, oh it was just my the, God. The, 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 yes. And so, um, but that's back when like text messages were like five cents a uh-huh. pop. So you wasn't texting like that. Hey. Um, and it was just a, it was a different time. And it's, I'm worried. My kids never having a phone <laughs> ever. So. Okay. They're not. Yeah, no, for sure. I um, wasn't I'm allowed nervous. to. I, I'm horrified. But the truth is, like, my kids were never going to have an iPad. My kids were never going to have an Xbox. My kid has an Xbox, and it is a fucking problem, bro. Not bro. Cut that. Sorry. What? I hate it. I don't like saying it. I'm going to emphasize it. No. I, it's because I was talking about Xbox. And then I'm going to edit me as a giant meatloaf. What the Where you're fuck? having a conversation and you're saying bro no. to the meatloaf. No. Okay, whatever you want to do, you're editing. I'm super excited. Listen, hold on. Disclaimer. I don't barely know how to edit, so there will be no inserting meatloaf. So just so that's clear, I'm sorry, but I will give you the recipe. I'm happy to teach you how to do stuff like that. I not that I have want. to take uh, this journey by myself. Okay. I have to, you know, this is time where you're holding the bike. And I'm pedaling, and I'm saying, don't let go. Yeah, yeah. And you're letting go. But I I never told you how to ride a bike. You're letting go. So. You're letting go. Okay. So I'm just buying a bike, sitting you on it, and throwing you. Basically. All right. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's it. It's depressing. There, There's ways you could fix it. Like, mm. uh Charging your phone far away from your bed so that you're not tempted. Stupid. Setting timers uh, to remind you um, and limitations. Limiting the notifications that you get so that you're not constantly being pulled to it. But it honestly, I think it's going to get to a point where eventually people start admitting that it is an actual problem. And they're going to classify it as an actual problem. And then you're going to need CBT therapy or DBT therapy to get it under control. But I'm just hoping that the aliens come before then and we don't even have to worry about it. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about that. Are you? Because the aliens? Yeah, for sure. No, I really am. I mean, I'm down, you know, zombie apocalypse. Um, Uh I'm down aliens. I'm down, you know. Zombie apocalypse is very like slow and messy. Aliens are bzz, laser ray. You're done. No, because I'm telling you right now, I am walking through the desert in pants similar to this because they have to have cargo pockets. And I am dragging an alien body and I am smoking a cigar with some cool shades on. And then you guys find me and I have to have a really cool like one liner. Yeah. You know, beam me up. Yeah, I mean, that was that was kind of cool. Yeah, but that defeats. You're telling them to take you. Yeah. So we'll work on it. Yeah. What's your weapon of choice against an alien? Wit. All right. I think just a nice conversation. Good luck. (laughs) You know, they're gonna come with their laser beams, and people are gonna be shooting at them. I'm like, hey, listen, Bob, I just want to talk, and they're gonna be like, what is this dude? doing right now Mm. he should be terrified and i'm like let's just talk about feelings and then Uh if it's a male alien you know what he's gonna do we gotta go we gotta go boys Mm. you see what i did there i have a question yes is it true yes i accidentally stumbled upon this on the internet men hate sitting down Face to face and having a conversation with women. But if you are side to side having a conversation with a woman, it's much easier for you to have that conversation. I It was on a thread and somebody was like, why do men hate talking about feelings and communication and women love it? And a man said, if we feel like you are not helping us with a situation that we have, like fixing the air conditioner or something helpful, we automatically tune it out, especially when you sit us down face to face and prompt this deep conversation 
um, we instantly are uninterested. But, and the guy said, my wife started sitting down next to me and not looking at me and we would look straight ahead and have this conversation and it was so much easier. And then he went on to say, the way the world is set up, women sit down and have face-to-face conversations with each other. There's all these round tables and stuff and men, it works so much better for them if you're not looking at them and you're side to side. He said, try it with your husband and I bet you, you'll get more out of him than you ever have. You know what my favorite is? Side to side, facing each other. Like if you were laying in bed, you know what I mean? Like side to side, like very Arm- Armageddon-esque. Not like, why is there got to be a pose? Well, because this is the bed and you're... Like, nah, like this, you know what I mean? Like Your this. head's on the pillow? Yeah, no. it's a conversation. No. Yeah. Right? I'd be like this because I'd, I'd need room for my hand. You're a fucking bitch. You didn't do the fucking dishes, you bitch. Well, that's not a deep, meaningful oh. conversation. All right. You're talking about... Yeah, I can't, I can't lay flat while I'm having a deep conversation. Why not? Because then you can get excited and you can sit up for a second and then you can lay back down. I just think it's a lot more intimate. You know what yeah, I mean? But because here's the different. thing. You're here's different. the here's the thing. If you were to say, if you were to pull up a chair and you were to say, have a seat, we need to talk. Yeah. Instantly, I'm in trouble. Interesting. I'm in trouble. What did I do? Right. Right? Where as opposed to, of course it's easier, but like what conversation isn't easier to have when you're not looking at the person? Like, like look, I could tell you, you have a black smudge under your eye. You know what I mean? And it's easy to tell you like this, but it is not easy to tell you like this. You better mother... Listen to me. Why would that not be easy? You're hooking your girl up. I'm just kidding. You don't have a black smudge. If I... For me, if I'm trying to have a conversation with you and you're looking away, I'm going to fucking karate chop your ear off of your head. Mm. I need you here because otherwise you're not processing. Well, you see, you tell me all the time I need to be looking at the camera, but when you talk like... Yeah, you're diff- you're the wrong person. To ask about this. Yeah, you are. Wait, what, did I just say that to <laughs> what the fuck? That doesn't even make sense. Sorry. Anyway, I, that wasn't even anything. I just I was curious. I will say that in therapy, when I was side by side with a certain partner, I heard shit I've never heard, and it all kind of clicked to me. And maybe men feel intimidated. And then somebody else in the comment said, you just need to be a lesbian if you want communication because men, it was a guy who said it. Not true. Well, we'll we'll try it. I communicate. I know, Flip. You are. And so I can't be the only one out here. You're single-handedly giving me hope. I'm not. I cannot be the only one out here. I know that there are like-minded guys that. Call me. You know like to talk and like to communicate and understand this is the funny part right let's make out this is the funny part is guys want things as easy as possible on the home front right (laughs) because there is and i'm not saying that this is every case scenario but in general right Guys are like, okay, I got to be a provider and I got to do all this and I got to be strong and I got to do this. And they want things easier. But in turn, they are making things more difficult by not just communicating. It's so easy if you just have a conversation like, hey, listen, like I'm, I don't really like the way that you said that. Kind of hurt my feelings. Right? It would just make everything so much easier. It would be smooth sailing. Mm. The women would be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Take off your pants. Not you, but... Yeah, no. I can, obviously. Okay. <laughs> with you. No, I mean, no offense. You... I'm cutting that part out. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to edit the part where you said, take off your pants, and then I'm going to rewind it where you said, let's make out, and I'm just going <laughs> to dub it. Don't you dare. There it is. Bingo. No, sorry. It wasn't you. You're great. Yeah, I can You're tell ha- by the disgusted no, look on your face. No. Yeah, no, it's not you. No. You're great. Listen, you really are. Super handsome, amazing personality, incredible human being the epitome of anything that any girl could ever want for sure well thank you for saying that yeah that but because lies, of but... how i know you yeah it it feels like touching my brother brother touching no you didn't have there's to... a whole category in the porn industry for stuff like that i know and let's... you know where i learned that no going my in... phone 
That's so funny. I know. Yeah. And so what's the moral of the story? We're all fucked. And if you're the person in the relationship who's constantly staring at your phone and ignoring your family, don't. Because your spouse will leave you. It sucks. It sucks, too. Because, like, there's times when, like, my kids will be like, mommy, mommy, mommy. Mm -hmm. Right? And, like, it breaks my heart. But then here's the flip side of it. It happens with me, too. Does it? Yeah. No, it, it happens with me too. Oh, listen, that was the worst. Yeah, Is no. The same amount? No, but, but you know, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. It's, I get it. I get, I, I, That's why you got your tattoo. Be present. Be present. Show yep. the people. They've seen it, but they show know. them again. Yeah, that's exactly why. Because I, I did the same thing too. But it got to a point where once you become aware of it with the person you're living with, and then your kids are like, whatever parent it is let's just say uncle just so we're not naming names uncle uncle watch watch uncle Un and i'm sitting here staring at the uncle waiting for the uncle to hear it but he can't because he's in a different dimension buying bitcoin in his imaginary world with his imaginary <laughs> friends ignoring us i see him right now <laughs> all right um Anyway. Yeah, so it's tough. It's tough. Um, I don't know if we're going to have time to get into topic three, dude. Although it would be a great segue. It would be. And I'll, I'm speaking a sucker of, for a good segue. Speaking of ignoring your kids, parenting guilt. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, you are. I'm so right. I, every night when I put the kids to bed and I get down in my bed and I settle, the voice starts. You're a piece of shit. You were in such a rush to get them to bed. You couldn't get them to bed fast enough. You didn't even bother loving them while they were awake. You ignored them all day. Mm. A real mom would have read a book. God, I was just going to say that. Sorry, you wanted me to back it up? And no, no, but I, I think about that because it's so easy, right? Like, I go to work all day. I come home. Like, I make dinner. Like, everybody has to bathe and stuff like that. Do you bathe every day? Yeah. Wow. That's good. Me too. Every day. Um. So it's just easy to tuck the kids into bed and to put some on TV? Not you. I mean your kids. Yes. Especially them. Hmm. Them, them, little, them little mama jammas nasty. Damn, dude. They are nasty. Listen, can we cut this? Because I'm embarrassed. But sometimes I'll skip a day. It's okay to skip a day. I'll I'll skip a day like if we don't go anywhere. Yeah. Like yeah, if if they're just at the house, like yeah, chill, yeah. No, I, I skip a day. I'll skip a day. But if they leave the house, uh, uh, and get sweaty and like yeah, like go to school and like or like whatever. Uh, uh, nah, nah. You need to get your little stank behind in the bathtub. Um, but I so badly because i remember still i have memories vivid memories of my mom reading to me oh the the bernstein bears or whatever it's called mandela effect i don't know what's real anymore you said it right um the velveteen rabbit um there was oh, there's a series of books and they were like not like the picture books but it was and ironically enough i didn't try to do this on purpose it was about like an alien kid who like got sent to earth and like was like living with these normal normal people but it was like a kid's book you know mm -hmm. what i mean and i remember sitting there and she would read to me at night and i'm just like fuck like i want to do that but like i just majority of the time don't have the willingness and that sucks well you do a lot yes but it's again the kids aren't necessarily gonna remember the, me getting dinner because yeah. it's i get it because it's required yes yeah. And it's like that extra just I get little. It. And so it's tough. I say this all the time that in the morning, I wake up before everybody and I kind of game plan my day. And at night, when everybody's asleep, I do my reflection. And when I'm brushing my teeth, I look at myself in the mirror and 99 out of 100 days where I fall short is something to do with parenting. I get it. And it sucks. I um don't have kids. 
Wait, sorry, cut that. Cut that. What? Cut that. I don't don't have them. It's just heartbreak. Are you? Oh, cause cause I get a break. No. Oh. It's fucking hard. I know. I know. But you and your wife always talk shit when you're like, "What are you getting into tonight?" I'm like, "Kids are at their dad's." You're like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> There's like a kid hanging from your head. Another mm. kid punching me in the balls. I'm like, "Gotta go. <laughs> My bath's ready." <laughs> Um, but anyway, I decided to sit down and help Caden with his homework. Usually I'm like, do your homework. I'll check it. And I sat down and did it with him. And I, me and him laughed together harder than we have ever laughed together. Mm. And I was like, I cannot believe I've been missing this experience. Getting to see how his little mind works, getting to see how he problem solves and processes, I never took the time to do it before, but now that it's just me here, it's my job. And also like I started uh, reading to them and letting them read to me. And it's the friggin' it's, I can't explain it. It was the happiest I recall feeling in a really long time. And I road trip to the sea. And as they get older, they hang out with me less and less. So to have the electronics out of the way and just have us in this moment, it was really beautiful. And it's very daunting, especially when you're friggin' exhausted, especially when you're the kind of person who gets overstimulated really easily trying to balance everything and you don't have any attention left to give. I just feel like if you sit down to do that, you won't regret it. Because I haven't yet. Damn. I regret not doing it. <clears throat> It was so cute. I actually, yeah, it was really cute. I want to go get them and read to them right now. Uh, there was two days where I was editing the episode from hell. I mean, the really good episode that was helpful to people. And I it neglected my kids. It was only two days that they were with me. And then they go back to their dads. And I was like, you guys, please entertain yourselves. I really have to get this done. I'll give you a prize. Like I bribed them, like, you know, just chill. So not only did I have them on screen time longer than I would have liked to because I had shit to do. But then at the end of the night, Caden's like, are we with dad tomorrow? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I would really like to spend more time with you. I feel like I haven't gotten to see you. Mm. Motherfucker. Damn. When I tell you the tears, I tried to choke them down because I feel like it traumatizes my kids when I cry in front of them. But I'm like, you're exactly right. And you feel that way because it's true. I have not spent enough time with you. And I am so sorry. And I, I will make it up to you, I promise. I will come to your school tomorrow and have lunch with you. Um, just because I'm not going to get to see you. And going forward, I will make sure that I have all my shit done. I didn't say shit before you guys get here. Because this job is weird. You don't clock out. Yeah. Um, and so I truly have been making an effort to do that. And I did go. The next day I had lunch with both of them. But it was out of guilt. And it's, I can go anytime I want, but it took me feeling guilty to go bring them lunch. And it was the cutest, most adorable thing, the look on their faces. You know what I mean? Um, the parenting guilt is so real. And I don't know that there's ever a solution. But what I will say is if you feel guilty just to feel guilty, then you're just hurting yourself and it's pointless. But if you, you allow that guilt to push you in a more positive direction, then there's a purpose for it. And there's a reason. I don't think you should ever beat yourself up just to beat yourself up. I use that guilt to improve. I think it's important. Yeah. Do you, so apart from reflecting, like, I don't see how you could feel guilty. You're such a fucking good dad. Dude. Yeah. No, but there's areas that I fall short constantly. I lose patience. I rush things. I, you know, it's just there's well, but that's the thing. Even if you're a perfect freaking parent, there's gonna be areas where you feel like you fall short. I think that that's just what comes along with parenting. Yep, and you know what helps me a lot? Not only telling myself one day they're not gonna want anything to do with me, so I have to enjoy these moments, but also telling myself that I don't know which one of these fucking memories is gonna end up being a core memory for them. <clears throat> Have we talked about this on the podcast? I don't think so. I have the weirdest core memories. 
like the like the time I was standing on my dad's dolly and I fell face first into the carpet and instead of consoling me, he just said, you're fine and left me there. And I was like, he doesn't love me. And like, I kept that in my head forever. Like the weirdest shit. Like the time my mom yelled at me in the car and my dad's girlfriend spanked me for pieing the pastor when she wasn't even like my stepmom. She was like, anyway, this shit stays in my head and I don't know what's going to stay with my kids. So I try to just remember that during every memory that they could have. I want it to be a good memory. <laughs> Question. Yeah. Pie the pastor? Yeah. What's up? What, what? When Dude, this story still gets me heated. It's super quick. There was a fundraiser of some kind. Whoever sold the most pies gets to pie the pastor. And I sold the most pies. But my bitch ass dad's girlfriend, rest in peace, was like, you're going to let he- you're going to let Sam- heaven decide. <laughs> yeah, you're going to let Hammy. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to call her Hammy. <laughs> love that. Her daughter, I Hammy. I love that for her. She said, you're going to let Hammy pie the pastor. And I was like, but I won. Hammy wasn't even in the competition. She's like, I don't give a shit. Hammy's got to do it. And I didn't understand why, but I was like, okay. She's like, so when they call you up, Hammy's going to go. And I was like, all right. And then in front of the whole church, they called me up and I was scared and I didn't know what to do. And they were clapping. So I walked up and I pied the fucking pastor and we got back out to the car and she whooped my ass. Another question. And I'm not judging. It's just a question. I'm pretty sure that if you're telling a story about a pastor, the line doesn't go. And then I pied the fucking pastor. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what type of uh, establishment you went to. And I'm not judging. I'm just. I. I... Did I say that? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry, Pastor, Sir, Your Honor. Um, your honor, <laughs> the judge too. Was this jail? Was this church in jail? I had a sunflower dress on, and my friend Kara was with me. Oh, yeah, but I don't think that that's a weird core memory that makes a lot of sense. You got traumatized. Yeah, but also like random stupid stuff. Like I remember hiding behind a corner in my house and saying "bitch" because I didn't realize if you said cuss words where nobody could see you that you're still saying it. That's interesting. And I thought that if I covered my eyes, nobody could see me because I couldn't see anything anymore. How old were you when you thought that? 17. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding. I was a little kid. But anyway, the weirdest stuff sticks with them. So every, every time I snap on them, immediately after I'm like, hey, that was me. That was me struggling to process my emotions. I apologize. I should not have reacted that way. You did not make me react that way. I am in control of how I react. Like, I I always apologize almost immediately. Well, I think I owe your kids an apology then. Because every time Caden sees me, he asks about Adam and Cody. (laughs) So I've given him a core memory (laughs) from my terrible story. About how you better be nice to your parents or else they're going to die. Yeah. That's where my trauma started. Perfect. As a kid. So just this is. Wait, can you are, have parenting guilt for other kids? Yeah. Other people's kids. It worked. That night. It, it, it did. Back that to night. back on their shit. But yep. yep. Maybe, uh, maybe they need a refresher. Oh, I got a doozy for them. Maybe show them pictures. No, I'm just kidding. That's a dark. Don't do that. You know, one time when I was in completely off topic, but this is just how different things were. I went to this kindergarten through 12th grade school in Colorado. Mm-hmm. And they had like this like day where they had like llamas and stuff because it's Colorado, right? Yeah. And alpacas and like just all kinds of weird stuff going on. And jumbo rabbits. I think polar bears. In Colorado? Yeah, like snow animals. I wouldn't think llama. Llamas. Um, and I'm a sucker for uh, llama. My second favorite movie of all time in cinematic <gasps> history. Don't you say it. The Emperor's, the Emperor's New, New Groove. Gl- <gasps> that is my king favorite cartoon ever made. Ever, ever made. I had, the, I had the poster from the movie theater. I had the VHS and I would play it on repeat. It was my favorite. David Spade as a llama was the most genius casting yeah. ever. It was so Frigging funny. Yeah, no, I love that. Um, uh, not to steal your moment. No, no, it's okay because it's about to get really dark. So I'm glad that we put a little light in there. Okay. And they were like, oh, kids, come here. The 
high schoolers put on a demonstration for you. And we walk into the gymnasium and they're like, if you ever think about drinking and driving, think about this. And it was like all of these like scenes. They had like a car that was like all mangled and this like person was all like. Yeah. And they're like, help me. Help me. I shouldn't have drank and drive. They were acting? <laughs> yeah. Oh. But but I'm a little kid. <laughs> right, right. And I'm like, oh my God, somebody help them. Why are you guys just standing here? Get them some He's bleeding. That is so traumatizing. And clearly it didn't work. You know what I'm saying? Not at all. Yeah. You're like, I won't drink and drive, but I will do crack. And drive everywhere. And steal a semi truck. Everywhere. Drive it into a Walmart. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) This just got so. Wow. Yeah. That was amazing. That was. That felt good. Yeah, you know why? Because we weren't trying to pull shit out of thin air. We had a guideline. We're prepared. And when I say we're, you. What do you think of the guidelines? Do you think we should have topics? Do you Other than it taking us 40 minutes to do the intro. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. I'm talking about those of you watching the episode. Let us know what you think. Because we can totally have topics just to keep us on track. If you don't want to know about the topics, we could keep them secret. What? Hello? We could... (laughs) I don't know why that made me laugh so hard. It was just like a girl in a scary movie. It always, hello? Just no, for no reason. Speaking of, if you're thinking that someone is breaking into your house, would you go, hello? <laughs> or would you fucking grab your Glock and hide? Um, well, as um, a, con- a convicted felon, I don't own a firearm. Yeah. Oh, no. But I grab the nearest weapon. Right. And I find a, a really dope hiding spot. Yeah. Like if I was in your house, do you know where I would be? If you say the spot that I've already mapped out every night of my life since I moved in. in 20- Probably not. Um, I would be, so you walk up the stairs mm-hmm. and then you have the railing. I would be right on the other side of the railing yes. ready to jump down. No. No. Yeah. Ready to jump down. No. On top of them. So, no. Yeah. You would not jump down like a spider monkey. Most certainly. No. I would duck down there, right? In the darkness. Actually, I would hide to the left. At first I thought the railing, but then they'd see me. So to the left where that air conditioner is, laying on the ground. As soon as they come up the stairs, slice their Achilles tendons. Oh my. Huh? Because I don't have a gun. Yeah. Slice their Achilles yep. tendons, yep. push yep. them Let's... right the fuck back down. Okay. I mean, I... Then I get on top of them and I put them in a full Nelson. Is that what you call it? Yep. Yep, and I fucking choke him the fuck out. And then you'd start. And then I stab him to death while he's unconscious and call the police. Unalive, and you just broke like 19 of the guidelines. Uh, <laughs> am I not allowed to say that? Slicing Achilles tendons. I'm sorry. I would uh, just beep it. Okay. I meant it. I'll, I'll shout it from the rooftop. That's my plan. Okay. Well, I'm jumping down. Because you're going to catch them off guard. And it's really going to hurt. If they're just climbing up the stairs like, oh, I'm just a burglar. I'm here to take some things. And they whoop, whoop. Yeah. And then they face in the stairs. But what stairs. if you miss and you just <laughs> throw yourself <laughs> off the balcony? For and then no you're reason. like, ow. <laughs> ah. He's just staring at you like, fucking really, guy? I'm like, like, listen, I really hurt myself. Just take what you want. Yeah. Just, ah. I, um, if my kids are home, I, I will penetrate him. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> yep, no, nope. no. I'm leaving that. If my kids are home, I will <laughs> high five him repeatedly while he's unconscious just to eliminate the threat. If it's me with? by myself with a high five him. What do you why what? You said penetrate. Yeah, because I was trying to think of another word for <laughs> stab. I think you can say stab. I think you can't say unalive. Okay. Poke. You could have said I, well, anything but penetrate. If my kids aren't home. One, I thought you were talking about dry humping them. That's, I mean, no, no, no. I Isn't that one of your things? How did you know that? Wait, no, how the fuck did you know that? Isn't that one of your things? You want to tell them about uh, 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 How do you know? Isn't that one of your things? Have I been betrayed by a loved one? 
No, you told me. <laughs> I did? Yes. I think it's because porn is so like dirty and slappy. <laughs> slappy. That dry humping is like subtle and sneaky. Anyway, what the fuck? <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us this week on the Tiff and Flip show. Thank you for sticking by us, me, even though I have mental issues. Um, if you want to leave us a review, that would be so cool. Call in and ask us questions on our voicemail. And we might play it on a future episode. Um, we have a Patreon if you want to join. No pressure. It's 10 bucks a month. And it lasts about two hours and 22 minutes. Which this episode will not be. Um, and there's really nothing to see except me readjusting because I'm self-conscious. That's not what I was going to say, but it's what came out. Well, I mean, way to really sell the Patreon there. <laughs> <laughs> way to make it really sound appealing. Half the Patreons are like, wait, wait a minute. That's exactly what she does. What the fuck are we I doing here? Um, Flip does this thing where he likes to hop on the Patreon way before the episode starts and then stay on for a little while after, which I think is wonderful, by the way. Thank you. Um, I never did that ever with my patrons. So, um, I think it's cute and I, I like it and I support it. That's good. Um, anyway, say something outro-y so that I'm not the only one. Bye. Bye.